Hey subscribers and watchers, what's up? It's me, Vivs from Slidenerd here. In this video, I'm going to talk about the most important and most crazy topic that people have been requesting me all the time, and that is async task here on Slidenerd. So in the previous videos, I've been talking about the threads and the handlers in extensive detail. If you guys haven't seen those videos, please go back and check them out because otherwise you have no idea what I'm doing in this video. So first of all, what is the async task? Why should you use it? How can you use it? What is the life cycle? And all these things are going to be answered in this video. In the next video, we will take a look at an example and figure out how to work with it. So first, what are the challenges in that? So the main thread, as you know very well so far, it should be available for doing UI related stuff. If you're downloading an image on the main thread, that's not fair because the main thread then cannot handle button clicks or any other UI events on your app and therefore we gotta make sure that we use background threads for doing stuff. Now activity manager and window manager are two classes that respond scan your app for responsiveness. So if anything takes more than five seconds on the main thread then an ANR error is triggered. Now this is what you see as the app is not responding do you want to close it or wait now that's exactly what you see now I haven't posted the dialogue here because that changes with the version and different Android versions have different representations of the scenario so so far what you guys saw was plain threads either with or without handlers that were used for performing long-running operations now even these are good only for doing work from 100 milliseconds to a few seconds why even your async task is included in this list now you guys are probably like what the hell man you're gonna teach us about async task and now right now you're telling that async task can do something more than a few seconds what the hell am I supposed to do this is what you guys are asking me right now and the truth is you gotta use services for doing stuff which is bigger than a few seconds and we will be talking about services once we are done with loaders and async task so what happens is any operation that takes several seconds may or may not execute successfully if you use threads because Android OS may kill those threads. Now you guys are like, hey, what? Now let's take a look at how that can happen. Now here is something, some image that shows the different priority levels that you have for processes in Android. Now we will be discussing in detail about each priority when we talk about services. But the basic idea is when the user is working on something, he may switch to a different app. So Android terminates processes to free resources in case several processes are running. Now if you're currently stuck on some app, that app has the highest priority and is always the last to be terminated in case the Android system is not finding enough RAM. So if the user switches to a different process then the current process may be terminated. Now when you say the current process is terminated you remember that threads are a part of the process which means if the process goes the threads go with it and that is why Threads are not really a good way to do background work because the Android process may be terminated anytime. Along with it, all the threads may be off. But services work in a different way compared to this and we will be talking about services in the upcoming video. So the thread is important only as long as the process within which it runs is important. That is why threads should do work from a few milliseconds to a few seconds and not more than that. So why use an async task now you don't need to do the following that is create your own background thread you don't have to do that you don't have to terminate the background thread at appropriate time you don't have to call methods here and there or post runnable objects or send messages to run some stuff on the UI thread like for example what you guys used to do with handlers and background threads in the previous videos and most importantly you don't have to manage any message queues or handlers to the background thread now everything is automated for you guys when you're using an async task so what does an async task do in that case the async task will so first you gotta create a subclass of async task and next what you gotta do is override certain methods of this async task class so that you can work things like you can work what needs to be done inside the background thread you can work how you're going to update your UI thread that is your main thread 
from the background thread and of course you can also work out things like creating the proper subclass and then calling the execute method using the object of the async task that you have so these are the rough steps that you have for the async task implementation now let's take a look at how an async task actually works because you guys have heard this word a lot it's time to see how things work so what you have is the main thread on one side and what you have is your background thread now the async task is something that works on both the main thread to some extent and on the background thread to some extent and here in the third box what I have shown is the status of the async task currently from the main thread you use the object of the async task and you call execute on that and of course there are certain parameters that I'm yet to discuss about as soon as you do that what happens is on pre execute is called on the main thread where you're supposed to set up things like the progress bar or some other variables that are going to be needed for running your task now once this on pre execute is completed till this time your async task is actually in a pending status it has not actually started work that needs to be done in the background thread so at this point the do in background method is called automatically behind the scenes for you now inside this method you're supposed to write code that does your long running task like say downloading a file or connecting to social media whatever you want to do you do it inside here from here you can call publish progress like for example let's say you're downloading a file which is 30,000 bytes in size every 1024 bytes you want to update the progress bar so for that you call publish progress and you supply this necessary value here from the background thread now this automatically calls on progress update on the main thread where you access the progress bar and you actually perform the update here you simply send the value in publish progress all this time the async task is in a running status once that is done the result is calculated finally at some point and on post execute is called inside your main thread where you can work with the result and you can do something like hiding the progress bar or hiding the progress dialog and doing other cleanup stuff that you do once your task has been completed at this point the async task is finished in terms of its status so if you guys find this life cycle a little confusing or something well bear with me we will be talking about this with the help of a real example in the next video when we work things out for now just try to understand what is going on basically so three parameters need to be provided to your async task the first parameter is what you call as params now async task is based on generics in Java if you guys aren't familiar with generics in Java I will be talking about generics in my Java videos on slide nerd so be sure to check them and check them out for more details params is the type of parameter sent to the task for execution for example if you want to download something from a site let's say you're writing an async task for that then params could well include the URL or multiple URLs from where the stuff needs to be downloaded from now the next thing that you have in the list is what you call as progress now this is the type of information within the task to indicate progress for example you wanna update the progress bar what you need is integer and that can be supplied with the second parameter the third parameter that you have is result now this is the type of result which is going to be generated from your background work for example you downloaded a file then that files output or URL or text might be the result in this case so these are the three things that you need to supply again this is just a con overview in terms of theory in the next video when we work the example out you will exactly understand how they look like how they work what is their structure syntax and blah 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 so next the four parts of an async task that we need to discuss like we saw in that life cycle on pre execute is called on the main thread before the task is executed now this is where you set up the progress bar or you start showing it make it visible or something then inside the doing background method what you do is you perform your long running operation so take the operation that you want to perform all the parameters that you need that is the URL maybe to download an image are supplied here in the doing background method the result of this computation may generate a file that is downloaded or maybe text that was 
extracted from the internet that's going to be supplied to your own post execute itself from here so while inside the doing background method from there itself what you can do is call publish progress now here what you supply maybe is an integer to indicate how much of your file was downloaded now when you call publish progress it automatically calls on progress update on the main thread now remember publish progress is called from the background thread but on progress update runs on the main thread and lets you update the progress bar for example setting the current value and then there's the on post execute which again runs on the main thread in other words there's only one thing that runs in the background thread and that is this method do in background now inside on post execute you can hide the progress bar or progress dialog and you can do something after the file was successfully downloaded say telling the user that your download was successful kind of stuff so there are certain rules of using an async task now first is that the async task class must be loaded on the ui thread so you create an object of this and that is done inside the ui thread now execute must be again invoked on the ui thread now you cannot call these methods like on pre execute on post execute doing background on progress update manually they are called automatically just like the activity life cycle that you guys have seen so far by your async task at appropriate times based on different events now the task can be executed only once which means let's say if you press a button and you want to download an image you'll have to create a new async task instance every time the user presses the button an exception will be thrown if the second time execution is attempted on the same async task object so this much discussion included all those basic things that you guys need to understand about creating an as using async task in the next video i'm going to dig inside eclipse and show you guys exactly how to create your first task in the meantime if you guys do like what you saw Please like this video, share this video, subscribe to our channel and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below and support our channel in any way you can. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.